Hello, I'm Emily and I'm back. I honestly don't know how this is gonna go because I am filming on a completely different camera than I normally do and I can't actually see the footage I'm recording as I'm doing it. So if the battery dies or something, I'm up a crick. And I don't know how exactly how I'm gonna edit this, but hopefully you'll actually see this video unlike the last couple that I've recorded. So in other news, um, my bookshelves are at a rainbow. I did this a couple weeks ago and I actually talked about this in another video, but I couldn't film, like, I couldn't edit it. So that one's lost the most of time, so I'll talk about it again. Um, I've always thought rainbow bookshelves looked cool, but I was always a little leery of the idea of my series as being separate. But this summer I decided that it was something I needed to try at least once. So I did it and that's what they're like right now. I'm not sure if they're going to stay like this when I go back to school because taking the books that are coming to school with me out might rest, mess up the rainbow, but I guess we'll find out when that happens. Today I'm going to do a summer wrap up because I'm going back to school in about a week and um, I haven't filmed any wrap ups since the first one I filmed in May because, well, that's actually the wrong way to say it. I have filmed wrapped up wrap ups, but I haven't been able to post them because of editing problems. So what I'm hoping is that this one will actually get up. And this is basically my wrap up for the summer since um, I got back from Rome at the beginning of June to now, which is the middle of August. This is August 11th that I'm filming this. But since I'll be going back to school, I figure um, I won't have much time to read once I'm back there. So I should be fine just filming this now. Um, I've read at the current moment 19 books since um, the last wrap up you saw. I'm hoping to get it up to 20 before I go back to school because there's a book I have for school that I need to finish. But um, I'm going to show you the books that I've read this month. Not this month. I've read this summer and I have to show you a lot of them as pictures on my phone because um, I don't have the books in library copies anymore. So I'm just going to show you these all and I'm going to do it kind of fast so I won't do really in-depth summaries or discussions, but I will tell you what I rated them and everything and we'll see how this goes. Okay, the first book I read this summer is a novella called Kindred Spirits by Rainbow Rowell. This is a short story written for World Book Day. Basically it's about this girl named Alina who's obsessed with Star Wars and wants to wait out in the line um, when The Force Awakens comes out. She ends up in a line with three people and well, things happen from there. Um, I liked it, sort of. It wasn't like the best thing that I've read. It annoyed me that it was catering to the idea that, o that the only people who are real Star Wars geeks are people who don't like the prequels, but whatever. Um, I think I gave this like 3.5 to 4 out of 5 stars, and it was pretty decent. I'm not sure if I'll go on and read um, more of Rainbow Rowell's work, but this was a good start. The next book I read is Headwind by John J. Nance. This is an airplane. This is an airplane thriller. Basically, um, this president of the United States is on a tour around the world, and while he's sitting in Greece, a bunch of police officers show up and try to arrest him. And um, the pilots of the airplane take off to keep him from getting arrested, and it's basically about them trying to keep him from getting arrested and figure out why people are trying to arrest him. This book. Every um, English professor on the face of the earth would turn their nose up at it, but I actually really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun and it was a really like easy, um, relaxing read, even though it kind of confirmed Murphy, Murphy's Law. But basically I, I liked it. I gave it four out of five stars. And one kind of annoying thing is I got this book at a, at a library book sale and someone did this to the spine. I don't know how they got it to be this shape, but I can't get it to go back to the normal way and it's driving me insane. The next book I read is the last book in the Infernal Devices trilogy, Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare. The Infernal Devices is about this girl named Tessa who comes to London to look for her brother, only to realize that she has like shape-shifting powers and get rescued by the shadow hunters who get mixed up with their war against this person called the Magister. Um, I read the first two books in May, and then I finished this up when I got home from Rome, and then I recently bought copies of the first two, but not the second two. I don't have Clockwork Angel yet, but I really liked this series. Will was great. Um, Gabriel and Gideon really grew on me in this book. I loved Gabriel and Gideon so much, and it was just a great trilogy. Um, I gave this one five out of five stars. The next book is one that I've been looking forward to for a while, and that's Flame in the Mist by Renee Adia. Flame in the Mist is Renee Adia's um, 
newest book she wrote before she wrote The Wrath and the Dawn. This book is like a Mulan retelling. It's about this girl named Marco who is being sent to marry um, the emperor's the, the one the emperor's son who will not later be emperor and um while she's on the road she gets attacked by the black clan and everyone but her dies she decides to figure out why the black clan tried to kill her by pretending to be a member of the black clan as like disguising herself as a boy and it obviously things happen from there i was really excited for this book because the wrath and the dawn is one of the best books i've ever read but i was actually really disappointed this book felt really fragmented and half formed um, when I read The Wrath and the Dawn and The Rose and the Dagger, um, The Rose and the Dagger is a lot more of a fragmented book than The Wrath and the Dawn. When I read it, I thought that um, it was like that because she'd been planning the series as a trilogy and had to be forced to combine it all into a duology. But now after reading this, I'm wondering if she's just bad at writing on a deadline because this book is it's definitely more fragmented than The Rose and the Dagger is, but it's also, it has a lot of the same issues. Um, Anywho, I really wanted to like this book, but it wasn't the best thing I've ever read. I rated it 2.5 out of 5 stars. It was a good idea, but it was kind of poor in execution. The book I read is Killing Ragan by Bill O'Reilly. This is a nonfiction book about the attempted assassination of Ronald Ragan. Um, I read this because when I was coming home from Rome, I watched like the TV movie that was made about this. And I thought it was really interesting and I wanted to see how the book was. I liked the movie better than the book. Um, the one thing that kind of bothered me about this was that it's, 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 it's about killing Ragan, but there's really only one chapter that talks about the assassination attempt. The rest of it is just an autobiography of Ragan and um, it was just not quite what I was expecting to get out of it. Anyway, I still thought it was pretty good. I rated it 3 out of 5 stars, and I apologize if I'm pronouncing Ragan's name wrong, because apparently there's something weird about the way I say it, and I can't figure out what it is. The next book I read is Blackout by Robinson Wells. This book is a little bit like if you've read Zeros by Scott Westerfeld. It reminded me a lot of Zeros. Um, also a little bit like Steelheart, but not a lot. Basically, um, there's a bunch of, there's like this virus that's giving all these teenagers powers, and some of these teenagers have gone terrorist and are attacking things. And it's about these four characters. There are two who are um, normal kids and two who are terrorists, and they sort of get mixed up together when um, the government starts interning kids that have powers. Um, I thought it was really good. I really liked Alec, who is, which is weird because he's arguably the evilest character in this book. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to get to the second one, if I'm going to get to the second one, but I really, really liked this one. Um, and I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is probably one of my favorite books of the summer, not because it was the best written, that was probably Clockwork, Pr Clockwork Princess, but because it was just such a good book. And that's um, Cold Summer by Gwen Cole. This is a combination, it's like a magic realism with, it's, a, it's magical realism and PTSD. It's about this kid named Kale and this girl named Harper. Kale and Harper used to know each other as kids and now Harper's moved back um, moved in with her uncle, so she. I can't even. I can't even describe this book. I'm having trouble. I'm having trouble summarizing it. But basically, Harper moves in with her uncle uh, and reunites with Kale, who she hasn't seen in years, and um, and she figures out that Kale's having problems because Kale has this uncontrollable time traveling ability that is currently taking him back to World War II, where he's a sharpshooter. And um, as time goes on, they are struggling to figure out how to get Kale to control his power. How Kale, they're struggling to figure out how Kale can control his powers and um, to mend his relationships with his family. This book, as I said, it's kind of magical realism more than actual fantasy. I'm not a huge fan of literary fiction, um, partially because I dislike the um, academic academic stigma it has and how people who academics who read and write um, this form of literature tend to think they're better than people that write genre fiction. But I really liked this book actually. Um, and I like, it's not the best written book I've, ever, I've read this summer. It's a debut and there are places where it does read like a debut. But I really liked this story and it was just a great, great, great book. 
Um, I gave it originally four out of five stars, but I'm thinking I might raise it to five out of five stars because I just loved it so much. So if you're going to read any book on this list, read this. This one was amazing. The next book I read is a really popular one. It's A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. This is an adult fantasy about these four different Londons and this guy named Kel who can jump between them and then gets into some trouble when he ends up smuggling something dangerous across between, between Londons. I, um, this book, as I said, is really, really popular. Everybody's obsessed with it, so I figured I may as well read it and see what they're all talking about. Um, this isn't the best book I've read this summer. Um, I liked it, but probably not as much as everyone else did, but it was still good, and I'm still planning to read A Gathering of Shadows at some point. I just haven't gotten to it yet. I gave this four out of five stars. The next book I read, um, is... The Murder Complex by Lindsay Cummings. I read this because I realized recently that while I've been subscribed to Lindsay's um, YouTube channel for a while and have been following things with Zenith pretty heavily, I have actually never written never read any of Lindsay's work, so I figured I should remedy that. So I started with The Murder Complex. Um, I forgot, and I forgot to summarize it. The Murder Complex is a book set in a dystopia. A dystopian is a dystop. The Murder Complex is a dystopian where um, the death rate, specifically the murder rate, is higher than the birth rate. It's about this girl named Meadow, whose father has trained her to survive, and this guy named Zephyr, who wakes up randomly with blood on his hands every once in a while. Um, and it's basically about how they kind of run into each other and then figure out what's actually going on in their world. And this is her first novel, and you can sort of tell, but it, I thought it was really good as debuts go. I'm really looking forward to Zenith, and I'll probably read, I think the next book is like The Death Code or something like that. I'll probably read that eventually. But yes, I liked this book. It was good. Um, and that's, I, I gave this one three out of five stars. The next book I read is Six Weeks by Mer Laferti. I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name. Um, this is a um, science fiction locked room murder mystery about clones. The six main characters are all clones, and they um, are criminals who are sent on this ship to sort of, like, um, get this ship to another planet. And once it gets there, they'll um, be free of their crimes and everything. But um, um, a couple decades in, they all wake up in new clone bodies and realize they've all been gruesomely murdered, and no one's sure who the killer is. There's, it's a locked room mystery because one of the six of them has to be the killer, but none of them can remember which one of them actually it was. So it's complicated that way. Um, that, that said, this was probably my least favorite book of the summer. I didn't really like this book um, for a number of reasons, but it was a good idea, but I thought there were some really annoying things that were done in the execution and it just wasn't that great. Um, I gave it two out of five stars. The next book I read is another one that I finally have a copy of, and that's The Diabolic by S.J. Kincaid. This book is another sci-fi, and it's about this character named Nemesis, and Nemesis is a diabolic, which basically means she's a genetically engineered human who is meant to protect this one person. In, in Nemesis' case, this person's name is Sidonia, and um, Sidonia's father is something of a radical, and um, when he... Um, when his, like, radicalness it gets their family in trouble, um, Sidonia is called to the, like, center of the galaxy, um, sort of as, like, a hostage, and Nemesis goes in her place. And while Nemesis is, th is, is at this, is in the center of this galaxy, she ends up needing, to, she ends up finding herself, um, outside of the things that she always suspected, which is protecting Sidonia and discovering and trying to trying to discover her humanity along the way. Um, this was a pretty decent book. Um, I really liked Tyrus. He was cool because he was an interesting character. Um, Nemesis was cool. Um, I don't... It was, it was a really kind of... It was an okay book. I rated it four out of five stars originally, but looking back it was maybe closer to three, maybe 3.5, because I really have no strong opinions about this book. It was, it was good, but it wasn't the best thing I read this summer. The next book I read is something that's been a long time coming, and that is The Fever Code by James Dashner. I'm pretty sure I've never ranted about it on this channel yet, but The Death Code is... not The Death Code. The Death Cure is literally the worst third book in existence. Nothing gets solved. Nothing at all. 
It's literally, I every time the Maze Runner trilogy comes up, I rant about the Death Cure because it was the worst third book I've ever read. And basically, um, six years later, we've he finally has written a pre wrote, a, wrote another wrote a prequel. There was another there was a prequel called The Kill Order, but that was basically the only character from the Maze Runner trilogy that was in it was Teresa, and it didn't, as far as I can tell, answer any of the questions that like I, I know I was burning to know the answers of when I read The Death Cure. But um, The Fever Code is another prequel and this one talks about Thomas when he's a little, when he's a kid and it's about how he and Teresa and Eris and Rachel build the maze. Um, and it was great because everything that I wanted to know in The Death Cure finally got answered and I know how everything worked out and it was just great and I was so incredibly happy. <laughs> like it, this is in some ways one of the most satisfying things I've read this summer because I finally know the answers to these things. That said, I probably should have reread the trilogy before I read this because it's been three years since I read a Maze Runner book. But it whatever um i was i was on vacation it was at the library i got it it was great i think i gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars because um but yeah it was great it was i'm so happy that it actually happened wait no oh, and it went black i'm not sure how well you can see um these um the things i'm holding up on my phone anyway i was looking at earlier footage like i've been filming this in parts and I, you can't see the covers of cold of cold summer or a darker shade of magic at all and I apologize for that but um yeah this isn't the I'm mean, this still isn't a very good camera I'm using but I'll go on now the next book I read is The Leaving by Tara Altabrando um this is a thriller and basically it's um the, on the first day of kindergarten six kids go missing and 11 years later I think it was 11 years later five of them come back these five kids don't remember anything about where they've been for the last 10, 11 years. It's basically about them trying to figure out where they were and um, the family of the one kid who's still missing trying to figure out where he is. That said, actually, that description makes the book sound a lot better than it actually is. There were some interesting things about it. One of the characters, Scarlet, um, her narration is in stream of consciousness and like it's all over the page and it's really cool from a writing standpoint. And I really like the other character, Lucas's narration. Avery was annoying. I didn't like her. Um, but all in all, I, th I thought this book promised a lot, but it was actually really disappointing towards the end because it, it wasn't tied up in a way that was actually satisfying and um, in the end, um, the author ended up focusing more on the romances she was building and the actual what on earth happened to these kids sort of thing. And it was just kind of annoying. I think I gave it three out of five stars. It's a, it's a, it's a good idea and I'd like to find another book um, on this concept to see if I can find one that works better. But yeah, th it was, this one was only okay. All right, and at that point I had to run downstairs and get the next book I'm gonna talk about because I don't own copies of this series and I was reading my family's copy of it. So I had to go grab it so that I can actually show it to you. Um, and that book is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire by J.K. Rowling. Rowling? Rowling? I'm not sure how it's pronounced. I don't think it's pronounced Rowling now. But anywho, I'm not gonna summarize this. I'm pretty sure everyone knows what this series is about. Um, but basically, um, I was, I went and visited family um, last week, I think it was, and we um, on the way home we listened to the beginning of this book in the car. We got like 458 pages in, and then after I got home I finished it off. Um, this is actually, and I'm going to say, do something very, admit something very horrible for the book community. This is actually the first time I've ever read um, the entirety of The Order of the Phoenix. I read the first four Harry Potter books when I was younger and never got past um, The Goblet of Fire. And um, I've tried to start this book multiple times and never was able to get into it. Um, and I finally was able to push through and finish this time. This book is ridiculously slow. Like, like my brother and I were talking when we were like 400 pages in on the way home and I was, I was just like, no, I was like, nothing's happening. Like, I don't know how this book got this long. And now I might have to, I'm probably gonna have to edit a lot of that out. Um, <laughs> just for the record, I, mean, I might have edited a lot of ranting out here. Um, 
but one there I'll talk about things. There's something I some things I did like. Um I I loved um the couple Snape scenes that are in here. Snape is one of my favorite Harry Potter characters, so I loved that he got a little bit more screen time um in this one. Um and I'm going to go on at some point in the next like six like next couple months because I need to finish this series because apparently I'm a horrible book person for not um for not having read the entirety of this. Um, I gave it, I when on Goodreads, I rated it four out of five stars, but I might be rating a little high given, given the series, um, reputation, but we'll just say four, four out of five stars. I'm finally through it. Maybe, um, maybe I'll have an easier time with the Half-Blood Prince. <laughs> The last book I read this summer is Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare. This is the first book in the Dark Artifices trilogy and basically it's about a couple of characters who from what I gather were minor characters in the later Mortal Instruments books. It's about Emma Carstairs and her pair of a tie, Julian Blackthorn, and um, uh, I think that's too many spoilers. They're trying to solve these mysteries, which they hope will also solve the mystery of who killed Emma's parents. And on top of it all, Emma, real Emma and Julian are falling in love, which is totally against the rules because they're parabatai. This book was pretty good. I liked the Infernal Devices better. I'll start out by saying that. Um, but I really liked Julian. Julian was great, and the dynamic between Julian and the kids was wonderful. I'm from a big family, and I loved having all by all the siblings, and it was so great. Um, I didn't like Emma very much. She was kind of annoying. Um, it was actually, like, the fairy stuff kind of really reminded me of Sarah J. Mass, which is why I almost said, I almost called him the fae at one point. Maybe they do call him this in here. I can't remember. But, um... Yeah, I, I got I got strong Sarah J. Mass vibes and also um strong um Cassie Clare's doing detective fiction um vibes. But it was pretty it was a pretty good book. Um, I gave it three point five out of four, three point five out of five stars, and I haven't decided if I'm going to read Lord of Shadows yet. I probably will eventually, but I have no idea when that'll happen. But yeah, it was pretty good. Oh, and I forgot. Um, this is another book I listened to part of the audiobook for. I got like 42% through it in audiobook form, and then I got the book from the hardcover from the library and just finished it that way so I could make progress. Um, that's all the books that I've read um, currently um, in the summer, but I'm going to show you the two books I'm currently reading. Um, one is Eats, Shoots, and Leaves by Lynn Truss, which is a grammar book. This one I should be finishing before I go back to school on um, because I have to read it for a job I'm going to be for doing. So I, that will make my read count for the summer up to 20, which will be a nice round number and I'll be happy. I'm a little over halfway through it right now. And the other book I'm reading is Dracula by Bram Stoker. This is the original Dracula novel. Like everything Dracula comes from this book. Um, I'm reading it because my brother and I are doing are doing like a book swap. We both read a lot, but neither of us read the same things. So we decided that um, that this summer I was going to read a book that he chose for me and he was going to be a read a book that I chose for him. And um, he chose Dracula for me and I chose The Fifth Wave by Rick Yancey for him. Um, I'm about halfway through it. Um, I'm hoping to finish it before I go back to school, but I'm not sure if that's going to happen. So if I don't, then I'll get it from the, lab from the library um, there and finish it off. All right, flash forward to the future. I'm now in my dorm at college. I'm going to do a tour of the books that I brought from home to school, hopefully in the next week or so. We'll see how long it takes me to get this video out. Yes, my hair is wet. I just took a shower and I'm filming this quickly because I have homework I need to do. So we're just going to get this done and then I'll go back to doing other things. And hopefully you'll see the entirety of this video very soon. But anyway, the reason I'm filming this is because since I filmed that, um, the rest of this video, I've read three more books. It's now the last day of August, and I figure I may as well just, um, talk about these books now instead of waiting and doing them in September like I was thinking about doing. So, um, the first book I read after I finished, um, filming that video is I Hunt Killers by Barry Liga. I don't have a copy of it with me, and I can't show you a picture because I'm filming this on my phone, but basically, I Hunt Killers is this book about, um, this kid named Jazz. Jazz's dad is the most dangerous serial killer that pretty much has 
been in the United States in recent memory. He got caught when Jazz was 13 and went to prison, but Jazz is deathly terrified that um, he is going to turn out to be a serial killer like his dad was trying to train him to be. And eventually what happens is this new serial killer starts showing up in Jazz's town and Jazz tries to prove to himself that he's not a killer by um, trying to catch this guy. This book, the first thing I should say is it's marketed and written as a YA book. If you are under 18, I would not suggest you read it. It's really gruesome and really creepy, but it was actually quite interesting. I liked Jazz as a character because I th thought he was really unique because he's got this whole um, character arc where he's um, trying to figure out whether or not he's actually a sociopathic killer the way his father was. And he's basically um, constantly looking at everything he does, trying to decide whether or not he's doing it because that's the way he actually feels, or if he's doing it because he knows that's the way he's supposed to feel. And I thought that was really interesting because I've never seen a character struggle with those kind of things before, and it just was really cool. Anyway, I give this book probably about 4.5 out of 5 stars. I'm not sure if I'm gonna finish. I have book two up there from the library. I read like a hundred pages and I'm not sure if I'm finishing or not, so I guess we'll see. The next book I read is Trophy Son by Douglas Brunt. This is an adult um, contemporary, I guess. I'm not sure. Basically, it's about this kid named Anton whose father, well, whose parents want him to be a um, like professional tennis player and it's basically about his life as his parents basically force him to, um, well mostly his father, forces him to become this great tennis player. I was I found this at the at the library, and I thought it was really interesting because I've been kind of in the mood for something about sports with uh, overly expectant parents, and this book is pretty much exactly what I was looking for. I did kind of wish it was a little bit more dramatic towards the end. There were things that I wanted to happen that didn't, and that could be just because whenever I read contemporary, I have a tendency to... Um, want something or expect something more dramatic to happen than actually can happen in the genre. Um, I gave it somewhere between 3.5 and 4 stars. The last book I read is White Cat by Holly Black. This is actually the first Holly Black book I've ever read and I realized w while reading this that she's actually way more prolific than I thought she was. Why she's not more popular than she is I'm not sure. But anyway, White Cat is this book about this, this kid named Castle and Castle is the only um, non-worker in this family of workers. Workers are people who can do certain types of magic if they touch someone, like physical workers can cause pain, memory workers can alter memories, dream workers can make you dream, transformation workers can change things into other things. And as I already stated, Castle is the only member of his family who's not a worker, so he just kind of goes to this boarding school and tries to stay out of his family's like crimes and stuff. But then he wakes up on the roof of his boarding school, which apparently he sleepwalked to, and this, and because everyone's afraid he got work, they kind of basically almost kick him out of school, and then he tries to figure out why he was sleepwalking and discovers a lot of things he didn't realize about his own life. This book is part of the ongoing Kaz obsession. Every time I hear about a book that someone likens the main character to Kaz Brecker from Six of Crows, I have to read it to see if they're right. This is the same reason that I read The Lies of Locke Lamora. Um, there are some similarities. Um, I mean, there, everyone because because um, workers need um, need skin on skin contact to actually work. You everyone wears gloves, um, and he um, Castle is a pretty good con man. So there were some similarities between him and Kaz, but Kaz is um, infinitely more awesome, which shouldn't surprise anyone. Um, this was actually, this book tried to take itself seriously, but plot-wise there are parts of it that are absolutely ridiculous. Um, I was trying to explain something that happened in it at one point, um, um, when I was, when I was reading it at work to the boy I was working with, and we were literally laughing because what was happening was so ridiculous when you actually think about it. So, yeah. It was it was cool. I actually I really really liked Castle's brothers, and I was really sad about what happened on that front because I wanted other things to happen, and it didn't, and I was sad. But anyway, um, this book was okay. I gave it three out of five stars. All right, so that's about it. That's all I've read. Um, all that I've read in the entirety of the summer now. I think it's 
I don't know. I'm up to I'm the re the read count for 2017 is now up to 50 out of 75. So that's good. Um, I'm going to send you back to the other footage, and I'll see you guys later. Bye. That's what I've read this summer. Um, I've also collected a couple books. I'm hoping to be able to give you guys a um, book haul for the summer before I go back to school, but I might not be able to. So perhaps I'll just. Um, I'll just combine my summer book haul with a book haul I'm planning to do when I get all my textbooks and stuff for school. Um, I'm an English major. I, I, I promise it'll be more than just textbooks. But yeah, that's what um, this has been, and hopefully you'll actually see this. Um, thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and comment down below, and tell me what you read this summer, what was your favorite book this summer, what was your least favorite book this summer, and what are you excited to read in the fall. Um, thank you for watching, and goodbye. Also, this is the stack of things I had to jimmy rig in order to get the camera up high enough that I could actually film myself, just in case you were curious.